Bruchem Aboim. Welcome to our home. Thank you very much for attending. Um, the lecture today on my thoughts will be on a topic called imitation. There's a saying that goes back to the early 19th century that says imitation is the greatest form of compliment. Now, how does the Torah view this concept of imitation? Now, one would think that imitation would be a proper path for a person to follow. After all, Shlomo Melech, King Solomon, writes in Mishlei 3.6, B'kol derachecha da'ehu, that know him in all your ways and he will guide your path. Now, this statement seems to indicate that one should imitate God after all. Isn't that our purpose in life? To become more godly, as we say thrice daily in the third paragraph of the Shema. V'yosem kedoshim, v'yisem parami kedoshim lelokecha and that you shall be holy to your God. Well, let's look in the Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, chapter 2, Mishnah 1. There, Rebbe states, which is the proper path for a person that a person should choose for themselves? Now, the key word here is choose. It doesn't say follow. This world is a place where we are commanded to choose the proper path and not follow blindly. Mankind was created with Bechira, free will. Now, in the past, we really never understood creation as well as we do today. Everything, everything in creation is part of a computer program. In reality, God is the ultimate programmer. Everything that God created does exactly what God has programmed them to do. The only exception to this fact is man. Man is not part of the program. We have the ability to change what it is that God wants from us. We have free will. And this is why the Mishnah is very precise in using the word choose. We all have the freedom to choose our path in life, even if it differs from that which God has commanded us to choose in his Torah. God does try to guide us along the proper path in life, but it is our obligation to take the initiative. As it says, that in the path that a person wants to travel, heaven helps him. We recite the Amidah, the standing prayer. We recite in the first blessing the words, Elokei Avraham, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Hebrew word Elokei, the God of, is placed between each of their names. Now, in other places where the names of the forefathers are mentioned, the name of God is only mentioned once at the beginning. Elokei Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As I've mentioned before, nothing, nothing is an accident. So what is the Torah trying to tell us? Basically, the importance of individuality and at one at the same time, the importance of unity. We serve God in our capacity as an individual, but we also serve him as part of a greater whole, a part of Knesset Yisrael, the holy nation of Israel, and citizens of the world. When we as a nation stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and accepted the Torah, we accepted upon ourselves the concept of arevis, culpability. We as Jews have accepted responsibility for one another. And in a sense, we are basically all one body. And just as a body is a whole and at the same time is made up of many different parts, and different organs and cells, each with their own unique function and purpose. Every part of a person has its own unique mission. One, that it must perform as part of the whole body. Uh, think of a jigsaw puzzle uh, that has a thousand pieces. If one piece is missing, hmm, the whole puzzle is useless. You throw it away. So too, our connection to the forefathers is our source of merit as their descendants. Though we may be lacking, their combined merits stand as a protective shield, helping all of us. That is alluded to by the names of our forefathers mentioned, one after the other. However, our forefathers also served another function. They showed us different approaches, different paths, and how we can best serve our Creator. In a sense, Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, was the greatest of the forefathers. After all, he served God with the attribute of chesed, kindness, and he was the paradigm of kindness. His life 
was dedicated to taking in guests and extending hospitality to wayfarers. He, he was the trailblazer. It was he who first brought monotheism into the world. In another sense, though, Yitzhak Avinu, Isaac our father, was the greatest of the forefathers. He served God with the attribute of Gevura, severity, strength of character. He chose a totally different path than that of his father Avram had chosen. He chose a more no-nonsense approach in his service to God, following a rigid regiment. But yet, at the same time, he continued to cultivate a loving relationship with his wayward son Esau. And though Esau's lifestyle was in total opposition to his own, he never cut Esau off. He even went so far as to put up with Esau's wives, burning incense to their idols in his own home. The Medra says that Isaac's blindness was a result of that smoke produced by their incense. It was he who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with God when God wanted to destroy the nation for their sins. It is related in the Talmud and Shabbos that he told God, I too had a wayward son, and I loved him. You should do the same. He did all of this going against his nature without even being commanded by God to do so. This was in contrast to Avnodino, Abraham our father, who God told, Shema Bakola, to listen to Sarah's voice and send Yishmael away. Most of the commentaries say that Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, was the greatest of the forefathers. He was the last of the forefathers and able to blend the kindness of his grandfather and the strength of character of his father. And with this combination, he was able to serve God with the attribute of Tiferet, beauty or truth, taking the middle road, blending the two opposite approaches together, forming a greater one using the back of his hand to reprimand and the front of his hand to caress. So from our forefathers, we learn the importance of being a part of the body of the nation of Israel, and yet at the same time retaining and cultivating our individuality. But the question still remains, should we find a mentor and imitate their every action? You know, we read in the Torah of Eliezer, the servant of Avram, transferred himself into a carbon copy of his master Avram, so much so that when he goes to Aram Narayim to find a bride for Yitzchak, Avram's family actually thinks that he is Avram. However, the Torah doesn't compliment him on his achievement. In fact, just the opposite, he is criticized. One should learn from a mentor, but then incorporate what they have learned into their own unique personality. Being a carbon copy of another person, even one as great as Avram Avinu, as Abraham our father, is incorrect. Life is about making, so pardon me, life is about trying to reach our potential, serving God with our own special qualities. So again, going back to the example of a jigsaw puzzle, if you have two pieces that are identical, the second piece is useless. It, it really serves no purpose. Each of us is born with our own unique mission. Though we are all alike as far as our inner or, or organs are concerned, God has, so to speak, gift-wrapped us all differently. No two people have the same voice, fingerprint, or DNA. Actually, there are nine things that are unique to every person. They are both the iris and retina of the eye. In fact, each individual eye is different than the other. Every ear, every limp, lip print, tongue, voice, toe print, teeth, even your gait, how you walk are all unique for each and every person. God did not create us to be carbon copies of each other. He wants us all to be unique, special, not just physically, but spiritually as well. You know, they tell a story about an elderly rabbi of a city who passes away, and the board of a synagogue were debating about whether to offer the position to his son, who was qualified and an alert rabbi. However, they were concerned about how he would lead the congregation. So they asked him, if he were chosen to fill the position of rabbi of the city, how would he lead its residents? He answered them that he would do exactly what his father had done when he accepted the position from his father. Well, with that remark, they installed him as their new rabbi. <laughs> Almost immediately, the new rabbi began to change certain things that his father had instituted. 
uh, the city fathers were concerned. They asked him, you said that you'd do exactly as your father had done when he took over the leadership of the community, and now, now you're changing things. He responded, I am doing exactly what my father did when he took over from my grandfather. He changed everything. So imitation is admirable, even desirable, but only up to a point. God wants us to emulate his traits, and so he instructs us through the stories and commandments of the Torah showing us through the stories and telling us through his commandments what he expects from us individually as well as part of the nation of Israel and citizens of the world. He taught us about clothing the poor as he did with Adam and Chava after they ate from the tree of knowledge. He taught us about visiting the sick as he did with Abraham, Abraham on the third day after his circumcision, consoling the mourner as he did with Yitzhak after the death of Avram, his father. Burying the dead as you read in connection with Moshe Rabbeinu. All the laws connected to helping the poor and even a concern for the burden of your enemy's animal. Yes, God wants us to emulate the traits that he has taken upon himself when he created the world. He wants us to be more godly, but on the other hand, he actually wants us to be human. He wants us to serve him with the with the, within the context of fallible creations that work hard at trying to earn his love and admiration. If what God wanted was perfection, he already had angels. No. What God wants is an imperfect being to serve him, even though they may fail at times. He wants us to serve him with our own special uniqueness, much like any parent who enjoys their children, even though they are all different. It is precisely all of our differences that make up the spices that give God Almighty a reach nichoach, a sweet-smelling favor, savor, pardon me, for him to enjoy. Let us give him nachas, pleasure. And with that, may we all find our own uniqueness in life and help to herald in the coming of Mashiach Tzikeno. Now. Again, I'd like to thank you for attending. Um, God, may God bless you all with health and wealth and happiness. And again, Shabbat Shalom. Once again, thank you for attending.